This video covers part of the content for the Cloud APIs virtual event, which is all about using APIs on SAP Cloud Platform. The content is available on GitHub, and this particular video covers the content for exercise three, which is the first of a number of exercises in a group called Learning with the Workflow API. In this exercise, we're gonna set up the dev space that we've already got in our SAP Business Application Studio, App Studio. So let's get started. So in the prerequisites, which we'll just have a brief look at here, in the services section, it was mentioned that a subscription to the SAP Business Application Studio was required, and a dev space should already be set up based upon the basic templates, but also including the MTA tools and workflow management SAP extensions. So in this exercise, we're gonna go through a number of steps, four in total. The first two steps, we're gonna add a couple of tools that are gonna be useful in our exploration of APIs. We're gonna add the JQ tool and the JOT CLI. We're then gonna clone and open this specific repo because it's got some other scripts that we'll find useful in our exploration. And then we're finally gonna connect from within our uh, dev space to the CF target that we have on our Cloud Foundry trial account. So let's get started. Here is my dev space that I've already got set up and it's running. So I'm gonna launch that now. I've called it Cloud APIs. You can call it what you want. And the first step describes adding a tool called JQ. Let's move this a little bit further over for now if we can. There we go. Okay, so because a lot of the APIs speak JSON, we'll be dealing with JSON in the course of this virtual event. But also because the authentication flow with OAuth also includes use of JSON, a tool like JQ, which is called a lightweight and flexible command line JSON processor, it's gonna be very useful to us for parsing and formatting JSON and for picking out individual values from JSON properties. So we can install tools inside of a dev space in the App Studio that we can use. And those tools, as long as we put them in the right place, can and will persist through dev space restarts. So let's install JQ, first of all. In the dev space, we can open up a new terminal. We can use the menu path, terminal, new terminal here. Or as it shows us here, we can use the control back tick shortcut, the keyboard shortcut to do that as well. So let's do that first of all with the menu. There we go. Before we continue, let me just make this a little bit larger so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna close temporarily the Explorer column and I'm gonna increase the font size so we can see what we're doing better. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a directory in which to place the JQ executable. Now we're in our home directory right now, which we can see there. And this command here will create a directory inside our home directory called bin. Dollar home always refers to our home directory. Okay, by the way, uh, when you're going through these exercises, you'll see that the prompt in the exercise itself is just the greater than sign here, just to keep things simple, just like there as well. But actually the prompt will look something like this, depending on which directory you're in. Okay, so we can have a look at the download page. And if you have a look at the download page for JQ, you will find the latest version of JQ is 1.6. And because we're running in a Linux container here, we want the Linux binary. So the download page will give us the link to download. And we can use curl, which is built in to the App Studio dev space to do that. Let me just make that little one bigger so we can see the entire command on the single line, first of all. We're gonna say, curl, go and get me this resource at this URL. If there are any redirects, I, I would like you to follow the redirects, please, curl. And I want you to redirect the output, what is retrieved, into a file called jq in the bin directory, in my home directory. So let's run that. Okay, we can see that's happened. Let's just have a look at the contents of the bin directory. Now we can see we've got the JQ file in there. At the moment it's readable and writable by me, the owner, and readable by others. 
but we want to have it executable so we can run it as well. So we'll now use this command to make that executable. That means now that we can run it. So if we now say bin slash JQ, we can see that we have access to execute this JQ command line tool, the command line JSON processor. However, rather than have to type the directory, the location of where the JQ program is all the time, we can add it instead to our path. Our path contains a list of directories that the shell will look through when you type the name of a program to, to run. The bin directory here is not in our path, so we'll add it, but we'll add it to a file called .bashrc, which is executed every time we open up a new shell, every time we open up a new terminal, so that every time we do open up a new terminal, this bin path will be added to our search path. So if you do happen to type this in rather than paste it in, make sure you use double greater than signs to append to the .bashrc file if a single one will overwrite it. So there we go. That is now the contents of our bash RC. And we can see here we've got, and I've done this just once before as well, we can see here we've got this export path equals dollar home bin, and then the rest of what else was in path already. Okay, let's close this shell, close this terminal and open up a new one just to prove to ourselves now that we can access JQ from wherever we are and we can, so that's great. Okay, that's one tool down, one to go. We now want to add a tool that will allow us to have a look inside access tokens once we retrieve them in the OAuth 2.0 flow. Access tokens, when you look at them superficially, they're long opaque strings of characters and you, you can't discern anything from just looking at the actual access token itself. However, what that access token is, is a so-called JOT token or JWT token, a JSON web token. And we can use the JOT CLI tool to tell us what's inside, to sort of decompress the access token and show us the details. Within the App Studio, within a dev space, we already have access to NPM, which is the Node Package Manager. And we can use uh, the Node Package Manager to globally, for us, install the JOT CLI package, which is available for Node. So we can say npm install minus minus global jot CLI, and it's installed. And because uh, within dev spaces, npm is supported out of the box, we can immediately use the command that comes with that jot CLI package, which is jot. There we go. Now, the next thing we want to do in this exercise is to clone this repository, the, re the exercise repository. We want to clone it and open it in the dev space, in the App Studio. Why do we want to clone it? Well, let's just switch the windows around for a second. And if we have a look up here, we can see that within the directory, uh, within the repository, we've got a workspaces workflow API working directory for our explorations of the workflow API with a number of scripts and files that will be useful to us. So that's why we want to clone this repo. So let's do that now. Let's bring that back into focus. And the first thing we'd want to do really from our dev space perspective is open up the projects directory, which is here, into our explorer. Okay, so at the moment, the explorer is showing us that there's no folder opened. We've not opened a workspace, so we'll now click the open workspace, choose the project directory there, and the dev space will briefly restart, showing us now the contents of the project directory, which currently is empty. There's nothing in here, which is fine. So now we're ready to clone the repo. We need to make sure that we're in the project directory, which we already are, but even if you run this command because it's an absolute path with the dollar home, you'll get to the right place. So we can clone that repo. There's the repo URL. And as soon as that's cloned into the projects directory, we can see it here as a directory, but we can also see it in the Explorer. 
So it just shows you here what the output should look like. And at this stage, we've got all the repo contents in our projects directory here. So this exercise step is suggesting that we use the Explorer to have a quick look around. We can see the exercises here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, these folders. What we're looking at literally right now is exercise three. We're looking at this readme. But as well as the exercises directory, we've got a workspaces directory. And within that, we've got a single, for the moment, a single directory called Workflow API, which is where we're going to be living for the next few exercises. In that Workflow API directory, we've got a number of artifacts. And this section of this step gives us an overview of what these artifacts are. Inside this Workflow project directory, we have an MTA, an MTA project containing a workflow definition inside a workflow module. In fact, if we open up that now, we can see there's the workflow definition. We're going to be deploying that later on to our workflow service instance. More on that later. We've also got uh, an authorities file. We'll look at what authorities are later. We've got a setup service key file which uses the CF command line tool to create a service key and also to bring that service key into a local file here. And we've got a number of other scripts and files as well. We'll look at all of these and we'll be using all of these in subsequent exercises. So for now, let's just finish off this exercise with step four. We want to connect our dev space to our Cloud Foundry target. Okay, we're going to be using Cloud Foundry, our Cloud Foundry environment in our uh, trial sub account. So we want to connect our dev space here to the Cloud Foundry system. We can either use the App Studio facility to do that. We just click on this uh, message down here because it's telling us already the organization space in Cloud Foundry have not been set. So we're presented with this very uh, convenient and comfortable wizard to do that. Alternatively, we can use the command line to do it using the CF command directly. So as this prompt is here already, let's just use this prompt to go through this to connect. I need to authenticate. Okay, and now I've authenticated. It's showing us the organization. I've only got one organization in this multi-environment sub-account. That's the organization we want. And within that organization, there's only a single space, which is the dev space. So a really nice, convenient way of connecting to our Cloud Foundry space. So there we go. Be aware that depending on where you set your trial up, the API endpoint presented to you or the API endpoint that you'll want to specify here if you do it manually at the command line may be different. So you need to check the details in your SAP Cloud Platform cockpit. Go into your trial account and have a look there. Okay, so at this point, we're all set up with a dev space in App Studio, some utilities, the JOT utility and the JQ utility, and we're connected to our CF organization and space. We're ready for the next part where we'll do one more piece of preparation, which is to set up a workflow service instance and deploy this workflow definition to it. So we can then start to manipulate that definition and instances thereof with the API. Thanks for watching.